Well, my daddy left home when I was three, and he didn't leave much. So Barack All Obama comes to Texas to raise money and give speeches and not be questioned and get out of town before he has to answer any tough questions about the illegals pouring into this state that he hopes to make into Democrats. He grants 26 seconds to the governor because that's how fast he could get past him because he didn't want to hear what he had to say. He doesn't care about you or this state or the crime here. He doesn't care about Rick Salter that was shot in the face by an illegal alien serving a warrant. He doesn't care about Rodney Johnson, the HPD officer shot in the back five times by a repeat offender illegal alien. He doesn't care about your neighborhoods and your stolen cars. He doesn't care about the crime rate here and the increase in drunk driving and the jobs that are lost and the hospitals that are overcrowding, the schools that are overcrowding, the 60,000 anchor babies per year. He doesn't give a crap about you. Keep voting for him. Keep paying for him. Keep rooting for him. Every one of you, I dare you. At some point, this will be a third world nation because that's how this guy governs. People like him run third world countries, not America. I'm ashamed and embarrassed he got to be our president. He's one hell of a player to make us think that he was a decent person. He's one hell of an actor to convince people that he wasn't the greatest threat this nation ever faced. But now he's there and he's proved it. Do it once, shame on him. Do it twice, shame on you. That's the public version. If you don't do everything in your power for the next few days before November to boot him out of office, Sheila Jackson Lee out of office, Gene Green out of office, Lloyd Doggett out of office, then shame on you. Pull out the piggy banks and write them checks. Call the campaigns today and do something. Stop being angry. Do something about it. Get involved. Drive over to their campaigns. Get signs and go start putting them out. Get walking lists and go start knocking on doors. Go in their phone banks and start calling. If it's one day a week for an hour, it'll make a difference. These people are here not because you voted for them, but because you didn't vote for their opponents. They're in office not because you helped them get there, but because you didn't help their opponents. The unions and the race baiters and the welfare recipients, they have their special interest. They might be a minority, but they're an active minority. It doesn't matter what the majority of Americans think. It only matters what the majority of people that show up on election day think. If you're not in the game, you can't help your team. And if you can't get in, excited and angry and motivated for just a few days now after everything you've seen, then we deserve what we get. If you can't do everything in your power between now and November, which is a matter of days away, to get these people out of office, then we don't deserve the country we inherited. We should be ashamed of ourselves. How dare we let these clowns overrun our country? How dare we back down when they push us around? How dare we let the mayor force our fire chief out of office? Because some crazy woman made unfounded allegations. And now she's getting a five-finger, I guess, ten-finger discount at Walmart while she's supposed to be on duty. How dare we sit idly by because of political correctness? Because our job means more to us than our dignity and our country? We should be ashamed. We should be ashamed that we have allowed this to happen. You ought to help every candidate you possibly can between now and November. Commit yourself. It's days away. Look what they've done in 18 months from a $6 trillion debt to over $9 trillion. A 25% growth in government, that's in 18 months. Give him two more years. What do you think he's going to do? You'll have nothing left to fight with. Government doesn't contract. The more bailouts, the more unions, you'll never turn that tide back. You can't do it. Because once people get hired by the government, they don't bite the hand that feeds them. That's a vote for Democrats for the rest of their lives. At some point, you've got to draw your line in the sand. At some point, you've got to say, you know what, Mama? Let's go. We're getting engaged. We're going to go find a campaign. We are going to fight back. Now, stop sending me emails. Michael, how do I get involved? 
Get involved. If you can't figure that out on your own, then good Lord, let the Democrats run this place. Jesus, they figure out where their offices are. They figure out where their campaigns are. Good Lord, do it for yourself. You've, you're smart. You care about this country? Then do something about it. We all sit by and watch these people push us around. We sit by and watch them turn everything decent on its head and go, well, that's just what's happening in America today. Yep, sure is. It's the craziest thing. Yeah, they're just, I'll tell you what, I don't know what's going on anymore. I don't mind if a 90-year-old says that because, good Lord, they're feeble. But if you're 25, 35, 45, or 55 and you've got an ounce of anything in your body, how in the hell can you not fight back with these clowns? Have they not pushed you around bad enough? The majority of Americans didn't want Obamacare. We got it. The man went to the Muslim world and apologized. They're building a mosque on the side of 9-11. What more do they have to do? Seriously. What more do they have to do? And Barack Obama comes into this state to gather up a bunch of campaign cash and he can't meet with your governor so he can tell him how bad our border is, grabs up a bunch of cash and boots out of here. You're going to watch it happen. And Bill White wants to be his boy running this state so the Democrats can take control. It's up to you, folks. It's up to you. What little bit of dignity we have left needs to be mustered now or forever hold your peace because they're not stopping.